Good morning, some esteemed members and guests. This morning, we welcome all of you to our online Sunday service. Let's start the day reassuring ourselves with Psalms 27 verse 1 to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me, they devour my flesh. When my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war breaks out against me. Even then will I be confident. May this verse be an inspiration to us all. Brothers and sisters, here are a few announcements from Stan Wesley. If this is your first time with us, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Kindly leave your contact details behind. You can help us by filling up a registration form. The form is as projected on the screen. Do let us know if you have any prayer requests. For further details about our programs and schedules, kindly contact our pastor or church leaders. Do keep us informed of your needs. You may have noticed some countries are presently experiencing the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. Even within Malaysia, there are some sporadic spike in cases detected. We are still keeping our community aid program open to help those in need. If you know of anyone who needs food aid, kindly contact our pastor or let our church leaders know our COVID team is there to help. For community chairpersons, kindly get ready your report for the coming second local conference. We shall now enter into his presence with songs and praises. through this online service and as we have sung we thank you for Jesus our great high priest we remember your words in Hebrew 4 that says therefore since we have a great high priest 
who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So Lord, we thank you that we, your church, can approach your throne of grace, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what Jesus has done. We commit this service into your hands, praying that you will show yourself strong. May your presence be felt in the homes that we gather. May those who come with needs this morning find you, our all in all. So even through our weaknesses, we can offer our sacrifice of praise this morning because we have a God in whom we can trust. O oh Lord, so we purpose in our hearts to worship you, to love you with our whole being. This we pray through Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
to Calvary, where Jesus lived and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that curse
Yes, Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. We thank you for your love, your life, your death, your resurrection. Lord, we thank you for the blessed hope that we can one day see you face to face through our resurrected bodies. And Lord, we thank you that you have called us to be your church, your body, your family, your bride. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen our church. We pray, Lord, that you cause your church to be strong, to be a beacon of light and hope in this dark world. Lord, we pray that your gospel be advanced in this local community, that lives are changed, relationship restored. Lord, we pray that our local churches here as well as the churches in Malaysia will be united. We pray, Lord, that you set our churches on fire, that you bring revival to Malaysia. And no matter what the political climate be in Malaysia, Lord, we pray that you set your rule and your reign. May Malaysia be one back for you, O Lord. Lord, we pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And may Jesus' name be exalted and lifted high through this land. For all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord God Almighty, we give thanks to you for you are good. Your love endures forever. Thank you, Abba Father, for sustaining and bringing us through this difficult period of uncertainties. Thank you for the rest that you have given us from the busyness of the world and the time to draw nearer to you and seek your face. As we wait for the right time for you to regather us to worship you in your holy sanctuary, we we pray that we will return with greater joy, hearts renewed and more united like never before, rejoicing in your love everlasting and greater glory. King of kings, Lord of lords, may the Lord's name be lifted high and praised in all nations. We give you thanks for all the servants of the Lord, be they apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. We pray, O Holy Spirit, empower them to preach the gospel with new passion and inspiration to all tribes and tongues, that the nations will turn their hearts back to God, the maker of heavens and earth. Father God, as in the days of old, you command the skies above and open the doors of heaven and rain down manna for your people to eat. You give them the grains of heaven. Lord, we pray for open heavens in our own nation. Rain down on us your mercy and grace that we repent from the sins of our stubborn hearts to follow our own devices. Lord, now we turn our hearts back to you. Open our eyes and ears to see and hear your will. Help us, Holy Spirit, to enlarge the place of our tent. Stretch our tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen our cords and strengthen our stakes, for we will spread out to the right and to the left. Remember us, O Lord. Remember Malaysia when you show favour to your people. Come to our aid when you save them, that we may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that we may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. Restore us, O God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. May your kingdom come, your will be done in our land as it is in heavens. May your name be exalted over all nations and your glory covers all the earth. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be mindful of Proverbs 3. Verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with all your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barn will be filled to overflow, and your wax will brim over with new wine. Before we take the offering, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you on bended knees, acknowledging the immeasurable wealth you poured into our lives. Through your faithfulness, you bless us richly in joy and laughter. You bless us richly in peace and quiet. You bless us richly in health and wealth. And so often, your provision for us far exceeds our needs. Truly, our barns are filled to overflowing. Our cup runs over with sweet honey. We want to thank you for the gift of love, the gift of life, and the gift of abundance. Here we are, gathered here today, to offer a tithe and offering to remembrance of the rekindling of your first love. Humble before you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture text is taken from Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God. Blessed morning to all who are listening in uh, to this online service this morning. A great greeting to you. Peace be with you. This morning I'm going to share on the topic Where is God in our crisis? Before we start, shall we go to God in prayer? Our Lord God Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the Creator of heaven and earth, Lord, please awaken our hearts to the things that are of eternal significance. Open our eyes to see the things that are holy, righteous, and pleasing before you. <coughs> oh, Father, as uh, your words speak for this morning, may your words uh, speak to the hearts of your people and edify them and transform them so that they can be the salt and light in the church, in their community, or in the nation. And Father, as I speak for the word, please anoint my lips, that your word may be, may be edifying, that your word may not return to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for being a good God who oversees us in all our crises and who are with us to strengthen us, to give us the hope and the future. All this I pray in the mighty name. Amen. We have gone through this COVID-19 pandemic for many months already. And we do not know how many more months we have to bear with this COVID-19. I just read two days ago that China may be able to discover the vaccine by end of this year, December, which is only another five months uh, to go. We hope they can find the vaccine, but we need to place our hope in God. We ask that God to help us, to deliver us from this uh, COVID-19 crisis, that He will destroy the crisis or eliminate the crisis for us. So, Father, we put our trust in you. And beside this uh, crisis, we also face uh, many other crises in our lives from time to time. They could be family problems, health problems, which are very common now, uh, work problems, or financial problems. And um, this COVID has affected many uh, people. As I know, there are about a million workers out of job. Uh, and not only that, uh, there are many who got their pay cuts. So the crisis has a great impact on the lives of the people. Besides this crisis, there are other problems that are also due to natural causes. For example, earthquakes, floods, we are which are very common nowadays. We have uh, tsunamis, we have uh, hurricanes, typhoons and all that. We can never solve all our problems because when we solve one, another one drops up. But when we give our life to God, we thought our life would be much better because we expect our problems to go away. But that is not the case. In fact, we find ourselves in a desperate situation when we are caught in a place between a rock and a hard place. So it is expected that many people will be asking, where is God when all these crises are happening? Over and over again uh, in the Bible, it describes about the men and women of great faith and they cried out in their crisis. They faced the greatest trouble and days of distress. God heard their cries for help. 
God was not deaf then, nor is he today, to hear and to help his people, especially in the days of distress. The Psalms in particular celebrate God's eagerness to hear and help his people in the in crisis or in times of trouble. David, the greatest king, testified that God had been a fortress and a refuge in the days of his distress. David knew where to turn to when crisis comes. In a day of trouble, I will seek the Lord and He will deliver me. And He will deliver me. And the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And not only David, the psalmist Asad says, In the day of trouble, I seek the Lord. God himself, even God himself says, In the day of trouble, call upon me, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. In Exodus 14, we find the case of the children of Israel, of the Israelites. They find themselves in a crisis, trapped with nowhere to turn to. They were caught between Pharaoh and the deep Red Sea. They had just been delivered from the strong oppressive hand of Pharaoh. God had demonstrated his power by delivering them from 400 years of bondage of slavery and brought them out of Egypt. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They thought they were going to die because Pharaoh and his army were closing after them, were closing in. They said to Moses, Was it that there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out from Egypt? It would have been better for us to stay back and serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. They were in fear because they were not by faith but by sight. Their faith in God is called in the question. God has just delivered them from 400 years of bondage of slavery. And now they are doubting God. They gave up in despair and cried out in fear. They question where is God in the crisis? Well, God did not leave them, or God was not there, or God has forsaken them. Or God did not bother to save them or to hear from them. No, God was right where He has always been. He was there with them from the very beginning of their journey, even bringing them out of Egypt. So you see, the problem here is their faith. Their faith is either very low or no faith, or because of fear, they gave up their faith. This is what happened to so many of us when we face crisis. We give in to fear. And when we give in to fear, we lose the perspective of God's presence and power to deliver us. What we need to understand is that faith and fear cannot reside in the same heart or at the same time. If we have faith, we do not have fear. Or if we have fear, we do not have faith. When we give our lives to God, we do not need to fear of what life may throw at us. Because God protects us, God covers our back. David said in Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are with me, your rock and your staff. They comfort me. David was in a crisis situation, but he did not fear because God was with him as he walked through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Likewise, we must not fear when we face crisis. Because God is with us. God is right where He has always been. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. We must have faith in Him and trust that He will deliver us. William Carey commonly known as the father of modern missions. He left behind a legacy of faithfulness to God. He established missionary works in India over a period of 40 years and he translated the Bible uh, or parts of it into more than a dozen uh, languages or dialects. He developed many modern mission methods. Uh, but David, but uh, Kerry knew the agony in crisis. He was forsaken by his fellow missionaries and he suffered persecution. He suffered the death of both his children and he had to live with his wife's insanity. The wife became insane because of the death of his children. And David uh, oh, Kerry worked on many major uh, missionary projects only to see them burn in a printing house fire. He also struggled with political turmoil between his native country, Britain, and his adopted homeland, India. Yet in every crisis, William Carey found refuge in God or in the Lord. His missionary works inspired many missionaries, including Hudson Taylor, Niran Jackson, uh, David Livingstone, and thousands of others. Even to this very day, I believe his missionary works and inspired many missionaries to go out into the mission field. So when we face crisis, what does it mean? Or uh, what lesson can we bring home? Number one, God is our way. He knows everything. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He is only potent, only present, only seen. God is all powerful. He directs the winds and the wind. Although God is in control, our troubles may not change, our pain may not diminish, our losses may not be restored, or our problems may not fade away. Daniel. Three times in the book of Daniel, stand before King Nebuchadnezzar and say to him, God rules in the kingdom of men. God rules in the kingdom of men. And on another occasion, or another time, Daniel stood before another king, King Belshazzar, and said to him, The God of heaven holds your very breath in his hand. The God of heaven holds your very breath in his hand. Secondly, we need to increase our knowledge of God. We may not understand why God allows evil to exist. Nobody knows why God allows evil. Even the Bible do not have all the answers. God did not answer Job in his suffering. And what God said, where were you when I created heaven and earth? Or where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know. What God basically is saying, you do not know as much as I know. Job did not get the answer, but he learns to live with God as something that cannot be fully understood. Yes, we have many questions to ask, but there are no answers. So we must learn to live with God like Job did. I remember a few years ago when I spoke, uh, to a friend, we are discussing about heaven, how heaven is like. So he said, uh, Where is heaven? How do you know there is heaven? Or how is heaven like? Has anyone been to heaven and came back from heaven? Well, this is a hard question. We do not have the answers. Yeah, but we need to learn with God. 
In fact, uh, in the book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 6 to 12, he says, God saying calamities so that we might repent and turn to God. God saying calamities so might repent and turn to God. Brothers and sisters, we need to turn from our sin and turn to God so that we can withstand the greatest judgment the world will ever face when Jesus comes again. Lastly, place our hope in God alone. We put our hope in so many things, uh, in jobs, in houses, in cars, or in people, people including uh, politicians, uh, including the people in authorities. We trust that they will take care of our welfare and well-being. We often feel disappointed. Or if disaster comes and takes away all these things, uh, then we are reminded that our hope is in God alone. In fact, there are many Bible verses that say our hope is in God alone. Let me read to you Psalm 33, 20-22. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, for our hope is in you alone. Let your unfailing love surround us, for our hope is in you alone. I have put all my hopes in God alone about 20 years ago. Prior to that, I led a very sinful life. But during the last 20 years or so, I came across a lot of problems or so. But God was there to help me to go through my crisis. He delivered me from my crisis. So I'm so grateful for God, for God, for what He has done in my life. He has blessed me with so many things, especially in my family. He was in ways that I do not know, but I know that God is up there watching over us in our crisis. As I come to the conclusion, let me say this. The most comforting thing that a Christian has is not that God will take away all our current struggles. Christianity is not for those who want answers to hard questions, but it is for those who want a strong foundation within the storm. Because when the storm of life comes, life is intolerable and suffocating. By, day, by night, you uh, cannot sleep. By day, you cannot rest. Where there seems to be no way, God will provide a way. The only way for us is to run and hide from God. As the psalmist says, the Lord is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Brothers and sisters, there is no other way but only God's way. If we truly seek God with all our heart and soul, we will find Him as the Bible promises. If we draw near to God, He will draw near to us in James chapter 4, verse 8. Let's close and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have been with us throughout our lives, throughout our crisis, that you do not leave us alone to fight this battle. Because, Lord, you are such a good and loving God, compassionate and merciful. Lord, we know you are watching us. So, Lord, help us to turn back to you, to turn from our sin. Forgive us for all the wrongs we committed against you. Bring us back to you, Lord. Because, Lord, we know that there is no other way. The only way is through you. So, Father, we thank you that as we face this crisis, current crisis, it has been going on for so many months. We just pray that, Lord, you will give us the strength and the wisdom and your encouragement that, Lord, we can go through this crisis 
uh, in camps. Then you will not shaken our faith by the children of Israelites. Then we will strength, we will stop, stand strong, and no waves of wind can shake us, or no storms in life can harm us, or influence us, or, or stifle us. Now. Our faith will not waver, because you know, we want to be a strong foundation in the storms, that we can withstand the storms of life only by your divine intervention, only by your strength and by your grace and compassion. Father, bless us as we continue to worship you, to praise you, to exalt you, and be with us in our crisis. All this I pray in your mighty name. Amen. Be strong and take courage. Do not fear or be dismayed. And you know why? For the Lord will go before you, and His light will show the way. So be strong. always remember for the one who lives within you will be strong in you today why don't you give all of your fears why don't you let me why all of your tears He's been through pain before And He knows all that you've been looking for Be strong And take courage Do not fear Or be dismayed For the Lord
and forevermore. God bless you, church. Amen. Let us now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ abide in us in an increasing measure. And the love of Abba Father dwell richly in our heart. Know that God loves us. God loves us eternally. And the leading of the guiding Holy Spirit will show us where we are wrong and bring us back to the Lord. Be with us. Amen.